all praises to the most high power the great i am loving kindness the holy great one the power of zion all praises to the all merciful father the one who was the one who is and the one who is to come family remember always remember who you are you are children of the kingdom of lights and you manifest the gifts you manifest the gifts, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding from which you receive from your Father of lights. You manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Most High is amazing. One, last year around this time, we had at least 12 inches of snow. Today, we barely have one inch. Remember last year, we went to um, Connecticut, not Connecticut, we went to Stonehenge. Stonehenge in New Hampshire. And we did together, we did the winter solstice. Remember that. It was an amazing time. But today, I woke up. I had to clean up maybe one or two inches of snow. Grateful for that. Sabathiel, the rest of the Most High family, rejoice. The Most High is amazing. The Most High, your creator, loves you so much you do not have enough words in your arsenal you don't have enough words in your vocabulary to express your gratitude the words have not been invented yet because the most high work is cyclical as it was in the beginning so shall it be in the end whatever it is that our ancestors received in the beginning the Most High would make sure he, he ordained that we would receive the same thing that they receive also. Because we have to know all his mysteries before the second coming of Messiah. That's why we received the other day the Tikone Hazoha. According to the Tikone Hazoha, it is a very ancient writing that was revealed by the prophet Elijah. Who came and studied with the with the rabbi twice a day, and his son when they hid in the cave, and these were Hebrew brothers, because all oh, you gotta look at the timeline, second century. He revealed the Hazoha to them, okay, and it was immediately sealed to be revealed again to us right now in this time, and it is to hasten the second coming of. The Messiah. If you if you watch the last video on the Tikkuni House Hall, I, I went through that. So the Most High made sure that we're going to get all his mysteries according to his words in his holy books. The Church of Satan have tried to uh, remove as much as they can. Whatever that they didn't remove didn't really pose a threat to their to their agenda. So whatever that you have in your hands, in your first stick, is because they consider that um, not a threat. Okay? They consider that not a threat. They went ahead and removed all the mystical, all the magic. They removed all the magic. They removed all the mystical rites, all the ordinances, they remove all the sacred, uh, all the sacred stuff Yahweh Shai or Yahweh Shai was doing with his closest disciples. You see, Yahweh Shai had, a, had thousands of people around him, but he had 120 disciples of which there were 12 closest hierophants, high initiates, and he would share with them many things. But I will take you to, to his writings and I will show you how he taught them. But here we are in this book, The Covenant of Our Fathers. The Mosai is amazing and he, and he made sure that he did not allow the church of Satan to remove everything out because he knew that once some of these things are revealed, we would have some people among us who, are, who will not receive it wholeheartedly we would have some people among us who would be grumblers who would be against it because they have been indoctrinated 
uh, based on their past. They have these are um, Pharisees and Sadducees among us who are who claim to be teachers of the law, bearers of the light. Yet they uh, they push back against the very light which they claim to bear. The Most High knew this would happen, so he he allowed some of these clues to remain within the Holy Scrolls. So his chosen ones right now, who who are supposed to bring out. This information would be able to link the clues together to bring to bring that forward to the rest of the children of light who are vibrating on the on a higher frequency on a fifth dimension rather than a low low third dimension, and they'll be able to receive the information that they lost because you are the generation in the wilderness. Okay. Call his name Loami, for he is not my people. There are a bunch of Loamis among us because they are pushing back against the light. Because somehow they think that they have the whole wisdom. They think they have the whole instruction. They think that they have the whole mystery. But in the book of Matthew, it says, only the son truly knows the father. So when I received the tikkun, it has a heart. I laid on my bed and I had a conversation. I said, Father, can you lead me in the Bible where I'm going to find the word Zohar in Kabbalah? Well, he said, you're not going to find Kabbalah, the word, but you're going to find the word Zohar. So I went to this book, which I purchased over two years ago, and I have not read since. I cut the book open to this page. I cut the book open to the next page. And bam, Zohar right in front of me. Before we get into that, I shared that with my wife. I said, baby, you wouldn't believe what I found, what the most I led me to find. So I went back to the video titled Tikkunet HaZohar, which is supposed to hasten the second coming of the Messiah. This sister left me a message. The enlightened ones. The enlightened ones was led to the same scriptures that I was led to in the book of Genesis where the word Zohar is mentioned. Here is the email. Read it for yourself. We may come back to it later. But I want to take you at the bottom of the email of the, of the message. The enlightened one says this. If I was never introduced to the book of Zohar, then I would not have seen what wisdom was downloading in my spirit about this verse, Genesis 19, verse 21 to 23. You are truly an enlightened one if the Most High led you to this. So let's go. Before we get into this book, The Covenant of Our Fathers. Oh, by the way, Joseph Smith translations. For all the Joseph Smith lovers. Joseph Smith translation. So let's go to Genesis 19. In Genesis 19, we find the account of Lot and his family. Angels were sent by the Most High to Lot to take Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah before the Father ran, ran fire and brimstone from the heavens down on Sodom, Gomorrah, and the surrounding cities. The angels is talking to Lot and they're saying Lot to run to the hills. But Lot is saying, I can't go to the hills. If I run to the hills, the judgment might get me there. But there is another city. It is a little city nearby. Can I run there instead? And the angel says, I'm going to, the angel says, yes, I'm going to grant you your wish. You can go ahead and run to that little city. Let's read about it. Let's start with 15. As the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Take up your wife and your two daughters who are with you. Lest you swept in the punishment of the city. But Lot was lingering, so the angels, the men, seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, and the Lord being merciful to Lot. They brought Lot out and set him outside of the city. And as they brought them out, one of the angels said to Lot, Escape for your life. Do not look back. 
Don't stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills, lest you be swept away. And Lot said to them, Oh no, my lords. Behold, your servant has found favor in your sight. You have shown me great kindness in saving my life. Would you be so kind and let me escape somewhere else? I cannot escape to the hills, lest disaster overtake me and I die. Behold, this city, there is a city that is nearby to flee to. It's a little one. Let me escape there instead. And my life will be saved. And the angel said to Lot, Behold, I grant you this favor also. I will not overthrow the city to which you have spoken. Escape there quickly, because I can't set it off on Sodom and Gomorrah until you get there, until you escape to that city. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. The name of the city was called Zoar. Zoar was a city of refuge. Why was Zoar, why was the name of the city called Zoar? Well, in our culture, in our tradition as children of light, as Hebrews, as celestial 12 tribes, in our culture, wherever we have an artifact, an artifact wherever we have a, a holy scroll, wherever we have an artifact, the holy scroll and the artifact were so important that the, and the entire city would be named after it. Let me prove it to you. We go now to the book of the remembrance of our ancient grandmothers, chapter 12, number 26. In this account, we find Shayari. Shayari was a descendant or a son of Shem. Either way, he's related to Shem. After the city of Enoch had been translated back to Eden, into the heavens when the seraphim came down and took them out of the earth, translated them into the celestial realms, the Most High sent Shayari to go and teach some other people that were on the earth so that they too can cross over at some point so that the truth can remain on the earth when shayari went to that city he stayed there a hundred years number 26 after he and his wife left the encampment of the ancient father in the place where they dwelt or where he dwelt the ancient father dwelt and after the covenant of Gabriel began to be fulfilled, the covenant of Gabriel was a covenant that Yahweh Shai or Matzah the Lamb came to Adam or Yatsikard and he told him, listen, your children truly are wicked. They have done a lot of things. And Yatsikar was very grieved within himself. He was petitioning the father every day, praying and praying for his children, hoping that they would repent. And the Mosai or Yahweh Shai saw his grief and came to him. Listen, I'm going to make a covenant with you. You don't have to carry the burden anymore for your wicked children. Your name is no longer Yatsikaro Adam. Your name is no longer that. Your name is Gabriel. You are the father to the righteous only. So this is the covenant of Gabriel, which extends from the time of Yatsikar from the beginning until the end of days. So if you are a righteous son, a righteous daughter, you fall right under the covenant of Gabriel, which means that Eden is coming back to you. You're not going back to Eden. Eden is coming back to you because you will inherit a new heaven and you will inherit a new earth. There is a celestial cleansing going on. The father is going to, you're going to inherit the new earth once the father is, is finished with his work. Once the angels is finished with their work and you're going also going to inherit a new heaven. So Eden is coming back to you. The entire earth will be renewed. Also, you will be renewed with the earth. There will be a new scroll issue for the earth. And you will be renewed and the earth will be renewed. The old earth will be done away with. So you are also covered under the covenant of Gabriel because you, the, the, you are the righteous ones. So let's go back. Shayari now lives in the city. While he resides in the city, the Most High gave Shayari the Urim and the Thummim. I'm going to show you why the land was called Zoar. And I'm going to show you why Abraham dwelt in Ur of the Chaldees. Because Abraham had the Urim. So the land was called the Urim. Okay? So Shayari had the Urim. And the Thummim. After the covenant of Gabriel began to be fulfilled with the return of the Mayanians. Okay? It was the Mayans who live in that day, not Mayan. With the return of the Mayanians to Eden, because Mayans 
go back to Atlantis, go back to Lumeria, go back to the motherland moon. Okay? And the motherland moon was none other than Eden itself. So there's no Mawin, it's Mayan or Maya. Okay? So check this out. Where Shayari dwelt was called Ur. Why? Because he had the Urim. He was the keeper of the Urim. Urim is plural for two. It's two stones, two glasses, two spectacles. And he had, Ur is singular, Urim is, is two, two spectacles. And by the way, I had a dream that I had the Urim. I had a dream that a pair of two spectacles fell out of my pocket and I picked it up about two weeks ago. So the Urim will be in our hands. It is a, it is a, it is a, it is a prophecy. It is a vision. We're going to get this Urim. Right now we have the, the Holy Spirit, which is fine. That's all the Urim will ever need. But the Father sent me dreams and visions. So let's go. Shayari dwelt in Ur of Ur because he was the keeper of the Urim. Let's go down. And the Lord had Shayari remain there at the land where he dwelt, where his ancient fathers dwelt. The, fourth, the most I had him dwell there. Why? To establish a people after his own heart. So he sent the Urim with Shayari. So that the ancient righteousness that the city of Enoch held would also endure among the people of Ur. Remember the, the, the people of Enoch in the great city of righteousness. They walked with the most high just like Enoch did. That means everything that they did was what centered to the most high. They, they forgave each other often. They kept forgiveness in their back pocket. They always talk with the most high. They look for repentance wherever it may be found. They love the father with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their soul. And they love, thy, they love their brethren. Okay, they taught their children holiness and righteousness and chastity from childhood. They followed the blueprint of the Most High. So the Most High wanted, wanted that righteousness to remain on the earth. So he sent Shayari to a land because Shayari was, was a righteous one. He had been exposed to Shem, to Noah, to Aki, to, um, to Enoch. He'd already, he, he known, he, he's known. To be a righteous one, him and his wife, him and his, him and his rib. Most I gave him the Urim, so the land was called Ur. And Abraham was a descendant of Shayari, so Abraham came out of Ur of the Chaldees. The, the Chaldeans, okay, Abraham descended from Shayari, and it was made known to me. Shout out to brother man. It was made known to me that his people were the original people of that place. And they are known today as the Marsh people. So you go down to 28. You see this. That the Chaldeans ended up enslaving the children, the descendants of Shayari. Even Abraham himself, himself became a slave and he escaped there. And there was a lot of idolatry going on with the Chaldeans and stuff like that. And you know how the story goes. The most I set it off on, on Abraham's father and burned the house with him in it. And the people says here, what became of the Urim? I don't know. But I suppose the Lord took it to himself. And as a thuman of Enoch, he probably went the way of all the earth. Now check this out. Iowa has a Urim. I don't know if it belongs... Is either they don't have one, they have some ancient records, or they do have one, and it's not this one. Either two, either there is a set of Urim in Iowa, and they're able to get these writings to us through Urim, or they don't have one, and they have some ancient scrolls that they translate these books from, or there is there are many Urims and many Thummim because they just said here. What became of the Urim, I do not know. Yet, these books came from the Urim and Thummim. I'm just saying, I'm not making no admissions here. I'm using my brain to think. Okay? So now we see that the land was called Ur of the Chaldees because Shayari was the keeper of the Urim. So therefore, 
Over here within the pages of the covenants of our fathers, we find that Lot went to the city of Zohar to escape the judgment that was coming upon Sodom and Gomorrah. When the sun was, re um, was raising upon the earth, when Lot entered Zohar, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone, brimstone and fire, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. I watched a video about seven years ago. Scientists went, quote unquote, to the location where Sodom and Gomorrah was. And they found the, the, some of the brimstone that was still intact on the floor. And they could not find it nowhere on the earth. So they concluded it truly came from the heavens. It was another type of brims. It was another type of, of stones that, that's not found on the earth. And thus those cities were overthrown. You can also find this account on uh, in the book of Jasher. We're not going to stop here, family. And mind you now, it's... It's, it's in, in, in Genesis, in Genesis, the city is called Zoar. Therefore, the city name was called Zoar. Where is the H? Where is the H in Zoar? Let's find out where the H went. Let me show you where the H went. In the Hebrew alphabet, the H is He. It is the fifth letter. In the Hebrew alphabet, it represents grace, it represents favor, it represents inspiration and revelation. Would you consider that us coming upon the knowledge of the Kabbalah and the Zohar is a great revelation and the Father is showing grace upon his people and he's showing us favor for having this in holiness and in righteousness, having prepared our soul from before, having prepared our mind and our thinking from before so we wouldn't be corrupted. Just like the Ish corrupt the um, Kabbalah and the Zohar. Now that we have it in our hands, we know exactly where to go, what to do, what not to touch, what to touch, what to read, what not to read. Because the angels are leading our steps. The steps of the righteous are what are um, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Most High. The steps of the children of light are ordered by the Most High. So the H is the fifth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It represents grace and favor. Watch this. At the beginning of a Hebrew words, H means the or the or behold. At the beginning of a Hebrew words, it means behold. But when it's used in the middle, it signifies, it signifies inspiration or revelation. When it used, when it's used in the middle, H, which is favor and grace, signifies inspiration or revelation. And at the end, it signifies what comes from. Watch this. Let's see if H is used in the middle with Zohar. 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 H is right smack in the middle of the word Zohar. Therefore, it, sign it signifies grace, inspiration, revelation and favor this is why they took it out of your bible to me to mislead you and so you can never see it remember the prophet elijah went and revealed the tikkunia hazohar to that rabbi in a cave where he dwelt for 10 years with his son and every day the prophet elijah came twice and taught the prophet elijah came twice and taught the tikkunia hazohar all praises to the most high blessed be he the prophet elijah came and taught Rab Shimon twice, right here, Tikone Hazohar, page 15. Rab Shimon escaped to the desert of Lod and hid together with his son Eliezer in a certain cave. A miracle occurred to them. A tree grew and they ate from the tree and drank some water. Elijah the prophet visited them twice each day and studied with them and nobody recognized them. Nobody could see them. They were in a different dimension in the cave. This is also mentioned in the Zohar Shadash. There's three types of Zohar. There's the Holy Zohar. There's the Zohar Shadash. And there's the Tikkone HaZohar. And the Tikkone HaZohar was the first that was revealed, sealed to be revealed again this time. Why? Because the Tikkone HaZohar will hasten will hasten the coming of the messiah made happen soon in our days may the coming of the messiah happen soon in our days it was determined 
that it was time for, for us, the children of light, to benefit from the death of the mysteries of the Tikkun HaZohar. Especially right now before the coming of the Messiah. As chaos multiplying on the earth, the uh, earthly mother angels are setting it off on the wicked. It is time for, right now for us to connect with the frequencies in these books. In the Tikkun HaZohar. So we're not going to go through that. We already went through that. Of, of course, he says in the Tikkun HaZohar, if anybody, if anybody rejects the Zohar, woe to the men who says that the Torah came to relate stories simply and plainly in simple ten tells. Woe to you if you believe somehow what there, there isn't more to what you are reading. What you are reading is like a woman dressed up in a beautiful dress with some makeup on. And somehow you think because you see her dressed in that way, that is all there is to her. You're not even thinking somehow maybe there's way more to her than just her body. There's way more to her than just her beautiful dress and her, pure, and her pretty eyelashes. There's way more to this woman. Maybe this woman been through hell and back and she's just putting up a front. Maybe she's just this mean killer and you don't even know she's disguising herself as a pretty one. Maybe she's sweet altogether. Maybe she's really loving and she's a, a genuine, chast woman. She's a, she's a, a, a how you call that? Uh, something Proverb 31 woman. Maybe she's really virtuous like, like your mother Naba. Maybe she's really beautiful, gorgeous woman. She just doesn't know how to come across and she just put on clothes. Maybe she's really, um, she has low self-esteem. So she put in something to, to attract attention. Woe to you who judges a book by its cover. If you're looking at the scriptures and you believe somehow in your simple little brain that the Bible is all that there is to it. And there is not way more to what you are reading. Woe to you. He who thinks that this mental is the actual essence of the Torah. And that there is nothing else in there. Let him breathe his last breath. And let him have, let him have no portion in the world to come. If you reject the mysteries, the decoder of the Bible secrets. Which is the Zohar and the Kabbalah. In this book it says go ahead and take your last breath. You are like the dead walking because you don't have the light in you. You are being led by your ego and by your own thoughts. You're not being led by the Holy Spirit because you are shunning the light to wish you the light that you we, that you claim to carry. You are grumbling against the very light that is supposed to be guiding you. Woe to you and take your last breath. Take it up to the most high. I'm just the bearer. I'm just the mouthpiece. So this is why... This city was called Zo Zoar, and now you know why. Why the H was taken out? Because the H, when it's used in the middle, like in the word Zohar, it represents grace and favor, inspiration and revelation. And the Most High is showing grace, favor, inspiration, and revelation to the ancient covenant people, Zion, his people, Yasharal. He is definitely representing that into us right now. And we are grateful. The fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is He. Or Aleph Bet is He. Why? It represents the breathing. Which He is spoken by breathing. <sighs> breathing. When placed in the middle of a word, it indicates inspiration. Something that is God breathed. Something that the Most High breathed. The Most High breathed. He breathed the Zohar into Yatsikar, Adam. He breathed the Zohar into, into Moses. He breathed the Zohar in the Kabbalah into Noah, into Enoch, into Aki, into all the ancestors, into all the righteous ancestors. He changed Abraham's names to Abraham or Aram. He put the hay in there, which represents grace, which represents revelation, which represents favor. Why, why he gave him the H? Because Abraham, his wife Sarah, couldn't have children. The Most High, in the in her very late years, blessed her with a child. He, he gave him he gave him favor. He gave him a land. He said, "Your children shall be as the stars of heaven, and as the and as the sand of the seashore. You you gonna be great. You gonna be great among men. You are my men. You are a man after my own heart." Abraham was called the friend of God. He had favor. He had grace. He had revelation. He had inspiration. So the Most High put the H right smack in his name, called him. Abram, the father of many nations, 
they know that God breathed that into him. They knew that they removed the hay out of Abraham. They removed the hay out of Zohar and, out of Zohar and left it as Zohar. The H at the end of the name for Sarah, it became Sarah with H. And you know, when it is used at the end, it signifies what comes from. What comes from Sarah? Isaac. Isaac came from Sarah. Isaac came from Sarah. The most are blessed there with that holy seed to which Jacob came from, to which Joseph came from, to which Ephraim came from, to which you come from. Ephraim, children of the kingdom who manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit, Kahe. Sin here by the Father from the kingdom of lights, created with a higher spiritual capacity, created to be different upon the earth, divine that's power carrying divine knowledge. That's who you are, family. Selective spiritual breed, powerful prayers. That's who you are, family. Create to walk in direct relation with the most high power, with the most high glory. It gets better. Zohar, Zohar, Zohar is found in many places in your Bible. Let me show you. It's found in Genesis 14, 28. Again, these kings went to war against Bera, king of Sodom, Bresha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shemabo, king of Zebuam, and the king of Bela, that is Zohar. The original name of the city was called Bela, but when the Zohar was revealed, when the Zohar was taken to that city, it became Zohar. But before it was Bella, it, it, and it became Zohar. Why? Because the Zohar ancient scrolls, the Zohar which was the most high breathed, was at that location. So Bella became Zohar, just like just like the city where Shari came became Ur, because he had the Urim. It gets better. Let's go. It's in Genesis thirteen and ten. Lot looked around and he saw that the whole plain of the Jordan toward Zohar was well watered, like, like the garden of the Most High, like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Zohar was well, was well watered like Eden. It was a beautiful place in Kemet. He went there, like, like the land of Kemet. It was a beautiful place, a place of refuge, just like Zohar or Zohar was a land, was a land of refuge for Lot, a land of safety to, for Lot to escape to in his family. Zohar has returned back to us right now to reveal to us the secret, sacred mysteries of the Most High, which we read about every day in the scriptures within the pages of the first and the second six, and we do not understand them. Why? Because it is hidden. It is kept hidden from you. There is a veil over these, these scriptures. Now the Father says it's time to reveal all my revelations. So in the last day, he pour out his spirit upon all his children. And he also pour out his spirit over the workers in the vineyard who labor day and night to bring forth his word. Moshato Enoch, open your mouth and wisdom shall be given to you. Just open your mouth and wisdom shall flow out of you. Mountains shall be removed from you. Rivers shall stray their course. It gets better. Let's go. Genesis 13, Genesis 19, 22, 23, 30. Let's go to Isaiah 15, verse 5. Zohar is all over your Bible. Isaiah 15, verse 5. My heart cries out over Moab. Her fugitives flee as far as Zohar. As far as Zohar. And as far as Eglath, Shilishaya. They go up to the hill to Lolith, weeping as they go. On the road to Horonaim, Hor they lament their destruction. The Most High was going to set it off on Moab. The fugitives of Moab flee to Zohar. Why? Because Zohar was a place of refuge. Just like Yahweh went to Egypt. 
um, Mary and Joseph took Yahawashai to Egypt in, um, in his early years when Herod was killing all the children because he was afraid of the coming king and he thought this king was coming to take over his kingdom. Yet, Yahawashai didn't come to take over no earthly kingdom. He was already the architect and the creator of heaven and earth. His kingdom was not on the earth. His kingdom was in the heavenlies. Yet, he has authority over every realm. You are not ready for prime time. Sit your ass down. Jeremiah 47. The sound of the, of the, of the cry rises from Heshbon to Ilya and to Jaza. From, from Zohar as far as Horonayim. And Igalath and Shilishaya. For even the waters of Nimrim are dried up. You are sinking your own battleship. Go ahead and breathe your last breath. Go ahead. These are all the places where the word Zohar is found. Furthermore, if you find any word that's, that says light or splendor, you can substitute the light and splendor with the word Zohar. Therefore, Zohar is all over your Bible. If you find a word that speaks of mysteries of God, you can Swap that word, that word with Kabbalah because the Kabbalah is the mystery. The Kabbalah is the, sac is the sacred heritage. It is the birthright. It is your inheritance as a child of the light. It is for you who are dispersed through the four corners of the world. What are we talking about here? You claim to know Christ. You claim to know his words. But you nothing like Christ. You don't do what Christ do. You don't think like he think. You don't walk like he walk. You are being followed by, own, by your own mind. The sealed portion. In this book, Moroni tell you this. Listen, Moroni says, look. Page 274, chapter 43. Sealed portion. Watch this. Moroni says this. Number 12. The Lord has commended me. That I should write somewhat. I'm going to write somewhat. Concerning those things. Which were kept out of the canon. Of the, of the holy scriptures. That have been presented in written form. And known in the latter days. As the testament of the bible. He says whatever that you think you have in your hand. Whatever that you're reading in this book. It is somewhat. It is not complete. It is just a little bit. It is somewhat. I'm about to write to you somewhat concerning those things. Look whatever revelation you have in here. It is somewhat. It is not the whole. It is a part. It is somewhat. All things concerning the works of the children of men shall be revealed. Many things shall come to light. That the early Christians leaders did not know. They did not have the spirit of the law of the most high. To guide them in that which they allowed to be given unto the people. They allowed, they allowed, they removed so much out of the scriptures. And Moroni is, was sent to reveal to you somewhat. He's going to fill in, fill in the blank somewhat. He's going to add a little bit somewhat. So many times Nephi says there are so much. But the father, the most high. Forbid me to write more. I cannot write more. Whatever you get in whatever books you have in your hand right now before the Zohar is somewhat. Why? Because the church of Satan had these writings. And if it was not according to their agenda, they will take it out. So you have somewhat of the seal portion, final testament of Jesus Christ. You have somewhat of the second stick. You have somewhat of the first stick. You have somewhat of the books of the remembrance. We have somewhat of the Kabbalah. We have somewhat of the Zohar. So we have to take all the somewhat and bring it all together and make it a whole because Moroni told you here, I'm going to give you somewhat. Why? Because the father shall begin to separate the tares from the wheat or the evil from the righteous. But the righteous shall receive these things with gladness and they will rejoice. For that which they did not understand shall be made known unto them by the gift of the power of the Holy Ghost. And they shall begin to rejoice as they read the words of truth. As they read the words of truth which the Most High has commanded me, Moroni, through the Holy Ghost, to write upon them. But what? It is somewhat. Whatever you get from Moroni is somewhat. Everything you get is somewhat, a little bit. Gospel of the Kailiri. You are nothing like Christ. You don't do, you, you do your own thing. You don't follow his words. 
You follow your own counsel. Page 34, Christ said this. Yahawashai called his disciples over and he said to them, Do you find the water refreshing? They say, Yes. We have drunk. We are filled. We are refreshed. And he said, Does any water remain in the well? They reply, Yes, sir. Yes. This well is inexhaustible. It can never be drunk dry by any number of men. Then Yahawashai says, it is even so with my teachings. My teachings is just like this inexhaustible well. What I have revealed so far is but somewhat. What I have revealed to you so far is but a small portion of the whole. Just like Moroni I told you in the sealed portion final testament of JC. He's about to reveal someone. Yahweh shall tell you, look, my, my teachings, my wisdom is just like this well which no man can ever drink dry. No matter how much I've already given you, it is just a little bit. It is a small portion of the whole. It is somewhat, yet it suffices you for the present needs. Why? Why? Let's see. It suffices you for the present need. Why? Let's see. Yahawashai tarried alongside the, the waters. He moved from place to place and teaching his disciples according to their understanding. The little bit that he gave them, the somewhat that he just gave them over here, a small portion of the whole. Why? Because he realized not everybody can get everything all at once. No. There is a ladder to climb. There is a Jacob's ladder to, cr to climb. There is a spiritual elevation to go up to. Not every student learns the same way in a classroom. You have advanced students. You have less advanced students. And you just have plain old dumb students. You have people who don't like school whatsoever. Who don't like to learn. And we have some of these students among us right now. And you need to be taken out. Yahawashai says this. He says look. Yahawashai taught his disciples according to their understanding. Some were strong. They were like strong, well-plastered cisterns holding water without leaking a drop. And others could not retain all that was poured into them. You know, like Thomas. Thomas was strong, well-plastered cistern holding water without leaking a drop like Philip. Philip was strong. Peter and Paul, they were strong, well plastered cisterns holding water without leaking a drop. Others, though, could not retain all that was poured onto them. Yahawashai taught each one according to what his, his own capacity. He taught each only in accordance with his capacity. He taught each disciple, men or women, according to their capacity. And some of his Hierophants, some of his initiates, some of his apostles carried much more of his teachings than others. Why? Because they're not all the same. They have different spiritual capacity. Some can hold more, some can hold less. Some learn fast, some learn slow. Some learn at their own pace. You are supposed to be the type of teacher who can, who can accommodate all types of students. You're supposed to stay after class and break it down to a student who couldn't get it all during the class. You're supposed to come down your, your ladder, your pedestal, and meet somebody where they're at. If somebody is on Jesus loves everybody or God loves everybody, you're supposed to meet that person there. You're supposed to say, you got to repent of your sins every day. You got to develop a relationship with the Most High. You got to make sure you love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. You got to love the brethren. You got to have, uh, you got to have the fullness of the of, of, of the most high name written on your forehead. You have to have holiness, righteousness, fruits of the, fruits of the spirit, kindness. Uh, you have to have uh, compassion. You have to have love. You got to go down to the basics with somebody. But if you have another student who's, oh, who's ready to elevate, to go further, you're supposed to rise up, lift up your chin, and be like, sit down, let me put you on. Let me put you on. Let me help you elevate. Let me help you go further. Yahawashai says, I reject those who encourage ignorance. 
Gaspar Kaledi, page 79, he says, I reject those who encourage ignorance. Stay within the gospel. Stay within the Bible. Go ahead and stay within doctrines and covenant. Go ahead. You only need still portion final testament of JC. You don't need nothing else. You encourage ignorance. The most I says, I reject you because you encourage ignorance. You walk in stiff neck. Your hearts are in an open book. Oh my gosh. You are in an open book. Your book that the book of wisdom that was given to you from the beginning. You left it on open. You like that guy who, who, um, who was given talent and never put it to work and buried it in the ground. And whatever you had was taken from you and given to the one who had more talents. All of you who reject the Zohar and the Kabbalah, what you going to say now, now that you see that the Zohar is all over your Bible pages? What you going to say now when you grumble against wisdom and knowledge? Yahweh Shai, which the one you claim to love. Christ, the one you claim to love. Repentance and baptism. Then you're going to receive the baptism by fire. The Holy Ghost, the one you claim to love. Tell you I reject you. You are not like me. I reject you. You encourage ignorance. You are stiff necked. Your heart is in an open book. You shall not be enlightened. You shall not be enlightened. I reject you. You do not build with me. You are a destroyer. Those who do not build with me are destroyers of my work. You trying to destroy those who are. You trying to destroy the Kabbalah. You sink in your own battleship. You pay in lip service, you are you have a useless tool. Those who pay lip service only are useless tools. You don't go deep into the mysteries, you stay right there on the surface. You settle for the easy way. Because when you go into the mysteries, it requires studying time. It requires you taking time out to study, to fast, to meditate. I'm on a 22-day fast. Today is day six. That's a sacrifice so I can open up my vessel to receive from the Holy Throne of the Most High. 22 days. Why 22? Because right before the flood, Noah did a 22 day fast. Each day corresponds to a letter of the Aleph Bet. Each day of my fast corresponds with a Hebrew Aleph Bet. And each Aleph Bet emits a certain frequency on the day. Each Aleph Bet release a certain type of frequency so i want to connect with the aleph bets which is the word because in the beginning was the word and the words what in the word what was what was with the mosai and the word was the mosai he created everything with the word in the kabbalah in the sifa yatsara the, the book of the formation was written by abraham or abraham abraham he broke down the 22 Fire letters of the Aleph Bet. So Noah did a 22 day fast before the Most High destroyed the world by fire. And 22 is the days that a woman have to fast in order for her to become a woman of Ababa to cross over in the spirit. If you fast for 22 days according to the records of the books of the remembrance, you will be able to cross over in the spirit. And quite as kept. Ladies, you've already been doing that. So all praises to the Most High. So I'm replicating what Noah did during a 22-day fast to hasten the second coming of the Messiah. Yahweh Shai says this, have no dealing with those who, who do their good deeds in public and shun those who push themselves forward for attention, attention whores. Never judge any man by the words of his mouth. And keep away from those who put the words of his mouth out in a torrent. You talking, but you ain't saying nothing. You don't know what the hell you talking about. We are children of light. Yahweh Shai says in the Kai Lady page 78. Let your lights shine before men. So that men may see the path clearly. Join your lights together. So that our lights can combine to form an unquenchable flame. For while a candle is easily snuffed out, it takes many men to subdue a forest 
fire. This is what we're supposed to do. To join our lights together as children of light. You're not supposed to reject my light. You're not supposed to talk against my light. Because just like Yahweh Shai, I'm being taught according to my understanding. According to my elevation. I am a well-plastered strong cistern holding water. I don't lack. I don't leak a drop. I can retain all that is poured into me. So I'm being taught by my master, my elder, wiser brother. I'm being taught by, by the Holy Spirit according to my capacity. Why? Because I have a higher spiritual capacity. I was created with a higher sp uh, spiritual capacity. I'm a vehicle carrying divine knowledge. I carry divine knowledge. I'm a celestial. I'm a divine diaspora. That means I ain't from here. I'm not from the root nations of this world. You, you take my DNA. I'm not linked to nobody here. I'm from the kingdom of lights. I'm a child of the most high power. The great I am, loving kindness, the holy great one. That's who I am. You are in an open book. You reject wisdom. You reject knowledge. You reject the rule of God. The rule of the most high. You are walking stiff neck. Your heart is in an open book. Yahweh Shai says, I reject you. You're done. In the Zohar, it says, go ahead and take your last breath. Be humble with your knowledge. Don't be puffed up. Beware the snare of false humility. Be humble with your knowledge. Page 19, Gospel of Kai Lady, watch this. The ant cannot understand the ways of an ego. Nor can an ego understand the ways of a man. How much less can men understand the ways of God? At some point, you were an ant. We were ants. Then we became egos. And then we became men. The ant can understand what the ego does. The ego don't understand the ways of a man. Nor does the man understand the ways of the most high. Nobody knows. You can understand the ways of the most high. The most high is too grand for your small brain. Be grateful that he's using you to some capacity. Remember the well. Nobody can drink this well dry. No. Whatever you receive suffices you for your present need. You only have a small portion of the whole. Morona is only giving you just a little bit. Somewhat. Concerning that which were kept out of the canon. Why? By whom? By the church of Satan. You could go ahead and read the, the entire chapter 43. It's a beautiful read. Now you have it. Now you have it. This is why the city was called Zohar. Because the H was taken out. Because the H represent inspiration. The H represent grace. The H represents favor. When it's in the middle, when it comes in the end, what comes from Isaac? Behold his son. You're not ready for prime time. You never have, you never will. We are all learning according to our understanding, according to our spiritual elevation. And in this book, The Lost Secrets of the Mystery Schools, we're going to go to Ephesians. And we're going to see, we're going to read about the glory of Ephesians. And the most I have something against you, you church of Ephesians. I have something against you, he says. We're going to go there. And we're going to break it down. We're going to read about Paul. In the mystery schools. That he was into. The mystery schools that he was initiated into. The sacred rites.
You are like the church at Ephesus. The most I have some against you. Repent and return. Zohar, a city of refuge for Lot. Zohar. Writings revealed for you and I right now to hasten the coming of Messiah. Isn't that what we're doing? Thank you to the enlightened ones. The most I sent you as a witness for what I had to do. The sister says, if I was not introduced to the book of the Zohar, I would never have seen what wisdom was downloading in my spirit about this verse. Thank you. Peace and blessings to you and your family, she says. There you have it, family. Your arms are too short to box with the Holy Spirit, man. Stay in your lane. All you fake subscribers who's on my channel, you can go, go ahead and unsubscribe. We don't got time for y'all. Unsubscribe. This is not for you. With your silly comments, thinking that you're going to deviate me from my work, you can never do that. 22 days of fasting. Each day to connect with a Hebrew Aleph Bet. Why? Because the Aleph Bet transfers awesome power and energy from the upper world to our physical dimension. The Aleph Bet transfers awesome power, awesome energy from the upper world to our physical dimension. Zohar, just like the Urim, was a city. And an artifact and holy scrolls. There you have it. All praises to the most high power, the great I am, loving kindness, the holy great one, the power of Zion. Don't you ever speak against the Zohar again. Shalom, family.